Thank you. So today's government seems to believe that, that, that this policy between urban and rural area is problematic, but we don't think so. Actually, I was born in Nagano, where is like which is very countryside in Japan, and I went to like Tokyo and International Christian University, and I got the I got like the massive benefits by the concentration of the like uh, the uh, economic and political uh, activities, right? So, and we think there is no like clear like exclusive reasons why we have to like states have to discourage like uh, the, this concentration because we we see clear benefit within that. So we are very proud to oppose. So I will explain two things. First, let me examine the ex economic level, why con concentration is is beneficial and why it's so efficient. And secondly, why, why in a political sphere, why it's better to have politics and economics in a single city. But before that, let me debate to the case. So we think prime minister is, some com is somehow confused with their case. So we think this debate, uh, the context is not like only in developed or developing countries. We think, uh, we think it's both. And uh, uh, so mainly they, what they to told you is there is economic disparity between urban and rural. Okay, so firstly, we couldn't see any feasibility or workability under their paradigm. Why these problems will be solved at all? Because my partner has already told you like, uh, like budget, given the budget of the states is limited, how can you create like infrastructure or like effective uh, ports or airports every like small <laughs> like ports to the distribute under their paradigm. So we assume under their paradigm that each scale of these infra infrastructure or economic um, like facilities will be comparatively will be smaller under their paradigm because there's the given the budget limitation, right? So we think it's much better to have big international like airport or, or concentration. It's much better. So secondly, uh, about the about the model we support. So we support the the both of the uh, like the cases of Tokyo or London, where they have like each political and economic concentration, and we are more than happy to use the benefit or money we got from the concentration to make people's lives better across the states. It's not like it's possible even uh, in a problem, right? So let me move on to the case of why the economic benefit is uh, exclusive in a problem. So. Judges, we think concentration is uniquely beneficial and efficient. Why is that? We can allocate the resources or financial uh, budget into the single single city. So I have uh, two levels of fact analysis. So firstly, in terms of infrastructure for people who are living in a in a in a like Tokyo or London, so we or like even the even the city in a city uh, in the developing countries. So they, they got like massive benefits of the infrastructure, such as like the very basic like perspective of companies or factories or trading stuff. So in that paradigm, because we have concentration and we, uh, we, we have like big, like comparatively like bigger uh, trade mechanism or uh, like, uh, the business mechanism in a paradigm, we think it's much better for the trading system. Why is that? Because when you look at the international trading, trading, it's much more efficient for the companies to have the in uh, to have the the like factories near the near the Tokyo or London or like the cities where there is a concentration because it's it's much more efficient and cost. Um, the cost is much more cheaper, right? So in, importing and exporting is much more beneficial in our paradigm. So what would happen under the policy? So because we couldn't see any clear like mechanism, how to under their paradigm, how like these uh, money or allocation will be distributed under their paradigm, we think they will fail to uh, to make another Tokyo or another London in the inside the countries, right within the country. Which means uh, we think uh, we states will highly likely to waste the money under their paradigm because they 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 have to distribute like every single um, resources up. In, into the cities, so that is a clear harm under their policy. So secondly, moving on to the politics sphere, we think uh, we think it should be the united, right? Politics and economics activities should be like all happen all together in a single city. 
what is that? So we believe uh, that, like, uh, when, you, when you think about the cities like Tokyo and London, there are many people, right? So because, simply because they, they, can got, they can access to job opportunities and there are many p economic activities, right? So we think in, uniquely in that situation, uh, political con concentration should be united in, the, in, in that. Why is that? Because the, uh, like in, in Tokyo, there is national parliament which enact the policy and which, which decide the like, direction of the country. So people, can, people in general can easily access to politics in, in a paradigm, right? So we are talking about lobbying, lobbyists, or we are talking about social movements or political protesters who want to, if, who want to inf, uh, get, who want to give impact to policies, who want to change the society. They have interest to change the policies by, uh, by the demonstration or movement. In that context, we think our paradigm is, is much better because we need to, we need the number of people, we need the corrective action and the economic concentration, because there is economic concentration and, and political con concentration happens in a single cities, we think that, we think that is effective. The clear example is the case of London, where we see like uh, the like political protest or demonstration of middle class and working class to the states. So we that is very effective and that is impactful uniquely in a paradigm. So we we couldn't see any like reason why we have to spread the resources resource allocation to every single cities. It's uh, we think concentration is much better. Thank you. I thank the speaker for the speech. Now I'd like to call upon Deputy Prime Minister. Here, here. Can I be heard? Okay. Okay, I will start my speech. Three, one. If they want to stand for Tokyo Prefecture, maybe we have to stand for Miyazaki Prefecture, who gave really delicious food and delicious beer to Sakurai-san, which is our precious friend. Three issues. Firstly, about resource which they, pro which they want to talk about, why we say rather resources will increase or at least it's washed in this debate. Second, why state policy should prefer egalitarian way even at the expense of net utility and net benefit. The, what this argument is going to prove is that even if we bite most claim for opposition bench, that certain specific demographic, certain specific region can be flourished, can be benefited. We think we have to take more slower but more egalitarian way of development. Even if the net utility is smaller, we have to prioritize those things. Lastly, the trickle down and the gradual spread of the benefit, including political capital, blah, 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 doesn't happen in the opposition paradigm. So about resource. So the reason why we think resource doesn't matter that much, or resource will rather increase on the our side, is that resource will increase from private sector on the our world. How states are going to develop in the opposition paradigm is that one mega city increase and, and gradually rise, and then business landscape of those mega city is mostly dominated by quite limited, like business like farms or companies who just initially happen to initially enter those cities. That's why the industries or the competition is going, industry is going to be monopolistic or oligopolistic because it's quite difficult for newcomers to get actual new retail chain, get new facilities or new business counterpart because already it's dominated by the random faster come out of those areas. Rather under our world, we agree that the space pace is slow and the scale is small. POI. There, there are different differentiations later, please. There are new uh, potential customers and there are new 
market prosperity is, even though it is quite far future, there's a business chance that a different private sector is going to come. This is quite beneficial because those private sectors have incentive to develop those areas by lobbying to those states and by pouring their own budget as well. That's what Mats Minami has told you. It, like for example, they will build factories in order to build factories and make it run well, they need stable electricity. Electricity. So they need bus so that they, their employees can come into factories. That's why those companies have also incentive to pour budget into the infrastructure development as well. Before going to principle, yes. Precisely because there is a concentration, there are more than enough opportunities for businesses to get customers that, that are across the board. That's why Tokyo has like so many small, medium-sized companies, so many shops, because there's enough customers to distribute those people. We're small towns, we'll have that. Uh, we we need to be reasonable. It's impossible for opposition to say no state no cities will develop. We already agree that scale and speed is smaller, but it's more beneficial. And we only see like limited mega bank, limited like only famous restaurant in Tokyo prefecture. But we see, for example, Joyfu. We see, for example, like prefecture or regional banks in smaller cities because it's easier to enter. Like we don't talk about opportunities because those opportunities, as a process, is dominated by some limited land business landscape. Then, why we need to be eager Italian? There are three reasons. Firstly, in a principal sense, as a mandate of the state, because state is the aggregation of every single citizen who have paid taxation, who have voted, who have rejected their own wills to the state, then every single citizen have similarly contributed to the establishment and the management of the state. Thus, every single citizen has to be equally treated at maximum extent. Opposition may say some group of people have a better contribution or some people have a better quality of reflection, I guess, but it's quite morally arbitrary that someone is born to be as, as some identity, race, or some born to be in some region, etc. That's why those differentiation factor should matter less, thus we have to cherish egalitarian way more. Second reason is that more pragmatic reasons about people's happiness is relative. Firstly, people with low income or low economic situations are exposed to the highest standard of life broadcasted and in the media and through the pop culture, the daily constantly exposed to the middle class or higher income class standard, then not only they're exposed to differences, but those difference on the higher standard is glorified and glamorized throughout media and pop culture, because those are the ones who dominate the media landscape, those are the ones who control and dictate content of pop cultures, and then they obviously want to increase self-esteem and affirmations, and they want to increase their own cap social, social capital so that they can get more followers and more more followers. That's why those lifestyles and their values are quite cherished. That's why people with lower economic situations or people who cannot access to those capitals have to always feel inferior that their lifestyles, their living situation is always miserable than others. Secondly, even for people with higher in income and economic situation, it's not that much beneficial because they needed to out compete others because job position and partner, for example, executives or the or resources are zero sum. That's why they have to outcompete. They have to be superior compared to other people. That's why they feel they're for 24 hours required to improve more and more so that they can get more resources so that they can get more better job position. We think even for those people, it's just endless demanding quite a serious situation. Last reason why states have to be egalitarian is that about priority of happiness and protection and benefit. People's wants will shift from fundamental to secondary and to quite minuscule trivial. Um, at the very beginning, people want stable water, clean water, stable, stable housing, free from a natural disaster, or like just food to live on. Then maybe next they want to, they want more clean clothing. Maybe they want to enjoy music. Then maybe some city individual come come to like debate tournaments like this. But if we just prioritize certain individuals, their wants will become gradually become more trivial of one, then we have to prioritize more fundamental protection at the very beginning. Then, lastly, why trickle down will not happen? In the opposition paradigm, in the mega city have, don't have get incentive to give benefits to surrounding cities or different regions for several reasons. Firstly, obviously they want to benefit themselves. It's quite natural for individuals that their life is more important than the unknown, less empathetic, like unknown individuals who cannot fully empathize, who cannot understand the situation. Uh, situation. But the second, in terms of like demographic composition, Minami already told you that the different city happen to have different cultural, racial, religious compositions. Thus, the, in, the majority individuals who dictate political landscape living in mega city obviously want to prioritize their own race, culture, or religion so that they can be valued more. They, those in those cities and political structure don't have incentive to give economic, economic, political benefit to different landscapes. Then, 
the claim is that political capital needs to be concentrated. Why it have to be physically present at mega city? In our world, the maybe it's not stable to enough to play FPS in the past PC, but they can at least utilize the internet so that they can voice up throughout the social media. They can virtually uh, participate in political decision-making processes, which is not only more egalitarian, but we can concentrate more political opinion in the virtual world. We think it's more obviously beneficial for that we propose. I think the speaker for the speech now would like to call upon Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Here, here. First, about the model and the context of this debate. Second, about the economic benefits, who can create the most for most people. And thirdly, about the political concentration, why is that better for all people? Overbuttals will be all integrated into my arguments. So let's begin. First, about context and model. As my partner has already told you, government has a very confused context in this debate. Because on the one hand, they talk about the economic development needs to happen and to, for these impoverished people to somehow uplift themselves. But on the other hand, they pretend they have infinite resources to spread infinite money across all the cities and towns and villages to build you know, internet, fiber optic cables across the country to have like you know, Olympic-sized pools everywhere and on theaters that can house like thousands of people. It like absolutely makes no sense, right? All those benefits about spreading the wealth and allowing opportunities can't happen under their context because of the limited resources that we already talked about. But, but even on top of that, right, like, like we have to understand, we have to accept the difference between our and their model, right? Their model is to somehow spread the resources so that they can create like metropolis wannabes across the country because they want to create maximum opportunities everywhere. Our context is that we accept that like naturally, like there's a tendency for political and um, um, economic concentration within a mega city, and we're not gonna stop that. What we are going to do is take those resources, small as they may, may be, to other cities so that they can have basic human standard of living. We don't need like gigantic swimming pools in Karuizawa to like have, have people enjoy. We just need like basic standard of living. That's our difference. And they have to prove why somehow like, you know, even people in Miyazaki is capable of enjoying the same kind of levels of resources and benefits they can do in Tokyo. So let's first move on to econ. No, um, first, so like we have to accept that like, especially in developing countries context, like it, infrastructure is extremely important because you know, bringing, having ports and roads allows the manufacturing to be created, take those exports and bring it out of the other countries to create income for their own cities and people that's just Across the across the board, right? But like infrastructure is like there's no point in creating small infrastructures because like you know cargo ships cannot come into like a small tiny port in middle of like um, middle of like rural Akita. Like that is just not possible, right? So you need to concentrate those resources on one city to create giant port so all port, all cities all ships can come in and create the kind of trade that's necessary. Well, the good example is Japan, right? Where they created like multiple airports across Kansai area, and yet none of them were able to gain the count of the um, uh, critical mass of resources and economic concentration to make it an econo you know, viable and profitable. And therefore, they have just lost completely to Incheon Airport in Korea, where all the cargo and passenger capacities all taken over. So like concentration is like extremely important in development and creating the kinds of infrastructure necessary to be viable, like not just like useful, just like even uh, to be used at all. Furthermore, that brings in companies, that brings in opportunities, not only just like big companies, but small companies as well. As I told you before, like if there's more people concentrated in one area, obviously big companies will benefit, but even smaller companies will benefit because there are enough people there to allow, serve even small companies to have, like look at the small ramen shops uh, or like small, uh, you know, izakayas everywhere across Osaka. Like those can't 
it exists. In fact, those are dying in rural areas because no matter how much money you pour into those places, like they're just gonna not have enough customers and they die out. So like, you know, even for small and medium sized companies, that's uh, like having concentrations better. And we believe that our model is better in, even for those people that lives in rural areas. Why is that? Because the concentration of com money, ta only tax revenue, and also just profit across the board allows people to go to back to their rural areas as a retirement home, or like you know, just go back to do their business and drop their money there. That's how how you know Okinawa is succeeding. That's how like a lot of rural areas, you know, bringing tax revenue through like Rusato um, and all that, like to like uh, allow that. So if we create more wealth within the city and distribute that to for the the minimum kind of things that they each city require, that is a better development model that uplifts everyone. Their model like just spreads shitty infrastructure and city companies across the board, no one makes money, No, there's no tax revenue, there's no profit, no one in, uh, income benefits, and therefore everyone die out. But, sir. Only just simultaneous de development, we also told you step by step, such as transferring capital from Sydney to Canberra. Why isn't it possible? Because it's inefficient and it just, it, 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 it's meaningless investment, right? If it's like individual level organically moving out to those cities and supplying their own livelihood, that's, that can, that's viable. If you artificially try city uh, 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 governments, try to build like huge infrastructure in the middle of nowhere, like Japan is like littered with like kind of worthless infrastructure across the country that does absolutely no benefit and just waits billions of money. So that brings me nicely into the political concentration issue. Because like they seem to think that like they've completely forgotten about the political angle and they've distributed like the Congress and the Supreme Court and the executive across like the country, right? <laughs> The problem with that is like that doesn't make it easier to access, right? It just makes it even harder because in order to lobby like Congress and the executive, you have to go to two cities, right? You have to, to talk to them. That's that makes it even harder. If it's just lobbying one person, you just have to go to Washington. Over furthermore, if you if there's a gigantic economic city, then those people live there and work there anyway. There's a hotel, there's a viable lodging, there are people that can come in and with you to lobby. So it's much even for like you know, people that have less money, less power, it's easier to lobby a central city where there is viable access. For the biggest uh, issue is like political process, right? Political protests are most effective when there are people concentrated and it disrupts the economic process within that country. So Paris, London, that's where most protests are most viable because it protests are huge and it disrupts, then therefore the objection to the government is clear. It just so it brings in you know more pressure upon the government to change their policies. The, the kind of distributed process, the distributed policies that they talk about is likely more likely to happen in those countries because there's bigger pressure. If you allow this proposal, we force governments to uh, protesters to go all over the place, which is not possible. All protests will be small because like th there's not enough people there and harder to get to. So like the political process will be severely deprived by their policy. Ladies and gentlemen, this debate is not about distributing resources everywhere versus concentrating. It's about dis distributing resources worthlessly and pointlessly. There's what we beg to oppose. I thank the speaker for the speech. Now I'd like to call upon government whip. Yeah, yeah. Like to start my speech and three, two, 
won. The biggest reason that opposition cannot be winning this debate is they fundamentally fail to engage the most core nuances of our cases, which is about the in, like, unequal distribution of the resources at the first place is the bad thing regarding the principle that Masao already evaluated. There is no responses as to prove why that specific concentrations only benefit specific groups of, groups, of, groups of the people will be trickled down to the entire benefit of the states. They were able to prove that the living in Tokyo is somehow beneficial, but they never really engaged to the nuances that the number of the people who can exercise that benefit is not that large compared to that we have slower but steadily ben uh, like de development in the like you know se re relatively uh, you know wider range of the you know nations is you know a anyway their benefit in the Tokyo will be activated in the several cities in our side of the house. Their main burden push to the government case is that you cannot create the mega cities like Tokyo in everywhere in the in, within the state, right? But we actually don't aim to create the mega city in every single city on the ground. We are actually saying that you know at 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 the same time, we, uh, what what I'm saying here is that you know that kind of resource, the form of the resource allocation itself, will be will, will not be the good kind. But the, uh, but really, on that. Um, uh, in, you know, unjust way of the resource distribution is in in and of itself is bad for the states, and you know that pra practical outcome in their side of the house anyway likely to be activated in our side of the house in the longer term. But before we move on to the actual um, content, uh, yes. Then what scale or level of infrastructure or opportunities are you going to create in these villages across the world? If you don't tell us that, we don't know what the benefits of those infrastructure or development will be um i like to engage that later but i, I if, if you're assuming the states have um considerable amount of the resources if we can distribute that resources into the particular like region um or, uh, like some some number of the region even though the level of the development can be not that good good as well but concentric concentrating concentrating the older resources but i think this is still possible of our side of the house that reach to that level in the um some point of time i don't think you know amount of the resources can be matter but amount of the time scale can be um not that fully engaged by their side of the house anyway so let's get into the uh contents firstly eco firstly economy secondly politics and lastly in terms of the meta wing first the economy uh first the economy their main the mechanism to prove why this you know, living in the mega city is be uh, something beneficial is firstly in terms of the basic access to the basic infrastructure um secondly about the cooperation about the efficiency of the trade uh to or more fluctuate businesses uh more like uh fluid uh move of the uh you know products or uh, people or something like that firstly if sta if states <laughs> have enough tech enough level of the technology to make the basic infrastructure in that particular city and there's their stances is the using majority of the resources in the specific one city it is apparently it is highly plausible in our little house that slow but graduate level of the establishment of the really really basic infrastructure is actually really hi highly likely to be achievable in our little house and secondly this will be the tipping point for the some corporation or some pe or some like groups of people or businesses actually move to the these kind of regions, since they, they anyway, the smaller and medium-sized corporation have an incentive to cater in a specific specific niche in the market, or they have they they see that their chances to dive and explore the new market they are actually state are developing right now. I think this is you know otherwise these these corporations cannot out compete in the big city like Tokyo against the really huge merchandise anyway dominate and in, anyway catering the majority of people on the ground. Uh, you know, in terms of the more numbers of the businesses are uh, like anyway likely to be exist in our side of the house as well. Thirdly, uh, even if economy is much better in their side of the house in the specific region, we already proved that the living condition within that kind of city is really, really horrible, right? There's no response to the prime minister material about the how the informal se sector are likely to be created within that kind of city and why the because of the high housing prices or how high community prices or you know high like 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 congestion of air pollution or crime rate, every single like in you know this kind of City problem is highly plausible if they stick to the uh, analysis about concentrating everything to the spec uh, like a p particular city. That 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 is the moment they have to bite the bullet. That this kind of city problem is actually inevitable. Hinder the most vulnerable uh, population uh, within that within that, that kind of city. No, thank you. Um, uh, then let's engage the dip, uh, the specifically about what deputy leader of, leader of leader of opposition tried to flag. Um, 
their core, like the, the, the most, like the, the best line coming from DLO is that people can, uh, anyway, if after people retire, they anyway move on to the rural area. That's the that implication of that, um, you know, lines apparently that, you know, they can trickle down to the benefit uh, after they develop the mega city to the uh, other area. No, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, the actually the ones that the most like crucial thing is that once they complete, you know, bigger concentration of the resources or people, it is highly likely that businesses or people or, you know, products unlikely to emerge to the another area since they are highly likely to have the incentive to exercise the privileges exist exist in the only the specific region they are talking about. I think this is no mechanism as to prove why that kind of retirement of the people. Well, these pe people after retire, they are soon going to the um the under developed yes. region uh, for like enjoy their like uh afterlife. I, I don't I don't think they something likely enough. Secondly, in terms of the politics, uh, they talk about more accessibility to, to the political activity, but the thing is that access to the politics does, does benefit only specific demographics in the people who already have in the meaningful amount of numbers of the people occupy that kind of specific um, large city. Election in that specific region will be disproportionately have the huge power against the entire nation. That is the, that is the most, you know, um, moment that you know uh, in nickel res resource distribution will be the bad uh, will be least to the bad kind of consequences in our sort of, uh, in their sort of house they also talk about the access to the social social justice movement but firstly there's no mechanism as to prove why the people in the specific city have the common interest and liberal interest which have to make actual social changes in their sort of the house and they necessarily support the more numbers of the people they have to buy the bullet that they have the more multiple interests of the people on the ground secondly we already proved that the minority are likely to lock in the rural area in their side of the house. They are likely to really move to the like, big city. Anyways, I don't think their, uh, their impact can be uh, fully stunned in their side of the house. In terms of the exclusivity, in terms of the time scale and the vulnerability of the actor, proud to propose. I thank the speaker for the speech. Now we'd like to call upon opposition whip here. here. Thank you, Kansai. So it's a kind of a messy round because government has, you know, kind of this 50 chance, right? They are okay with dispersed mega city, but they are not okay with a very single mega city. But they are uh, totally egalitarian at the same time. They are okay with a dispersed kind of the, uh, you know, a minimal city, but you know they are not okay with the things go that to one single city. We told you if they are okay with you know all the things Minami has tried to flip, which is about you know concentration, minimal concentration and the efficiency of the city itself, then we are providing a better consequences because you know as our leader from the leader opposition told you, roads and all those stuff provides better efficient cost performance when it's gathered together. Therefore, we say we already won this round. So, but I'm going to talk about three things in my speech. Firstly, I'm going to talk about the deal with the egalitarian issue. And secondly, I'm going to talk about the economical issue. And finally, I'm going to talk about political issue, which we all say fail to engage. Firstly, about the egalitarian issue. The egalitarian issue is mainly talked by Masao, all right? This idea is about if you disperse resources, it's equal, that's why it's great. This notion is coming from premise is coming from the, you know, actually, if you gather one single city, then it does not disperse. But, you know, our Toshi already told you, actually, you know, 
concentration makes a better cross funds as well. So if you think about the you know things like you know Paris or you know London, actually you know those co mega corporation stays in Paris or in London is try to cross funds minimal companies which locates in a remote area as well, which is enabled by the you know efficient actual you know promotion of the all the funds uh, no, no, sorry uh, material uh, transportation because of the, those kind of mega city exist. They never engage on this point. That's why we won. And also we say, uh, yeah, so you know, we say, then they said like distribution actually incentive, there's no incentive. But we told, already told you, you know, there's natural incentive for the people to actually cross from the remote area because of the, you know, actually resource is dispersed and in the first place. And also, you know, if the sum of this resource is bigger in our paradigm, then, you know, actually, you know, there's a more capacity for us to do that. You know, it's unfair for the government sides to say that the infinite amount of the resources, that's why distribute it to the, all of the area, like, you know, gold, bunch of the gold, then we're gonna lose automatically in the, any of the, this round, right? We are talking about the people, you know, states which have limited resources and it has to be the first basic assumption. Then we say, our sum is better. And we already told you about the case of the Paris and all of the Tokyo and London and examples. They have no example, no models of how they disperse or how, what is a successful example model. So we say we are taking the higher ground. So, you know, then they said distribution, there's no incentive, but we already told you about, you know, tax mechanism, all right? There's a natural incentive with, you know, remote for, uh, you know, to, for, you know, government to gather the tax itself and, you know, remote, uh, uh, place it to the remote areas. Think about, you know, London or Paris or France or, you know, any kinds of the states have the capital cities, economic and polity, actually, you know, disperse, the, you know, those kind of the road distribution. Because in a policy, it's actually, you know, really difficult to make a policy that only, you know, enabled at the Tokyo because, you know, there's legal disparity, there's no legal disparity to distinct, you know, human rights in Tokyo and human rights in some remote area. That's why, you know, automatically those kind of things distribute. And then they, um, then they said, like, you know, rent is higher, but no, again, if you think about the things, you know, states like, you know, Paris, there's a dispersion, right? There's a diversity of the rent. You know, if you think about, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, place like Barbes, actually it's cheaper than remote area. In Tokyo, Shimo Kitazawa, it's actually cheaper. So, you know, there is actually, you know, rent. Because of the, those kind of fluency and mobility, it is uniquely enabled in a, those kind of, cap, uh, you know, mega city, uh, capital, single city, actually enables to mobilize the economy itself. Then they say there's a discrimination. But discrimination, happens because there's no people who can claim right, all right? We can build a community. One people in Akita cannot claim their right or, you know, have a poverty power. Hundreds of people, hundreds of people of the minority in Tokyo can mer merge themselves and it has higher impact when they have, you know, appeared in the media, right? So actually, you know, it's also, you know, won by our point. Then they said, like, you know, job opportunity is also higher in Tokyo, right? Now, actually, you know, because of the online culture, actually, you know, you can, you know, look, you know, work from the, you know, Nagano or, you know, Akita or Hokkaido to, you know, Tokyo company. And you can actually stay there and probably, you know, once a year, you know, you can go to the Tokyo for the party, but it's, but so forth. Then they said, like, yeah. Uh, so your only mech about distribution is that it's tax, which means the state has a natural incentive to direct it to rural areas. Why? No, it's not only tax in the first place. There's a natural incentive, as I said, to cross funds, you know, remote area because also, you know, natural resources and also, you know, human populations there, you know, right? So, you know, actually, you know, there's a, you know, natural incentive. Toshi told you, real estate never actually engaged. Then, you know, we say also say like, you know, tax also distributes because there's, you know, no policy, you know, you can't make a policy just, you know, only in, in Tokyo, right? Or London, right? They never talk about it, so, you know, already failed. Your point of information you, uh, shows your failure. So uh, then, you know, finally onto the issue of the uh, polity, which real estate has never engaged. So all the issues kind of, you know, okay, it's like dynamics kind of things, all right? Dichotomy, right? You know. It's like, you know, concentrations, they agreed and our agreed, and it's a like matter of extent. Only unique delta in this round is, you know, coming across our side, which is if you accumulate polity and economy, then, you know, you can, you know, uniquely ac ac activate the, you know, power of the protest, all right? 
protest works because it hinders some activity. And if you protest in Akita or let's say Campbell, it's fine, but it hinders less because there's no economy. If you protest in Paris, it hinders the economy so greater, that's why, you know, media have incentive to report, and that's why, you know, policy have incentive to change because it's, you know, problematic more than that. Toshi told you, right? This is a unique point, which is never engaged by that, that side, kind of a side. So, you know, I don't think, you know, only from the, this metric, we can win this round. Thank you. I thank the speaker for the speech. Now I'd like to call upon opposition reply. Yeah, here. Two things I'm going to talk about in this reply speech. I'm going to talk about overall development, and second, about distribution of that resource. So first, overall development. Their model, they say, slow but steady. That's it. There's like, like the mechanism there for slowly development is based on a premise that they somehow distribute like weirdly, like small infrastructure across all of the country with their unlimited resources and that somehow makes it happen let's take their best case scenario they can do it they spread that resources across somehow and then there is somehow those kinds of infrastructures created we still don't know why there's an incentive for companies to go there you know to develop there or do business there why it's the incentive for anyone to go there and we've told you that the concentration of people is necessary for efficiency, efficient use of, of infrastructure. We told you that that's the only way a lot of small and medium-sized companies can be viable. Like, that's the, that concentration is necessary. They admit that this is going to happen to some extent, and yet they have done nothing to mitigate the forces of economic forces of concentration and just hoped that creating, like, like, I don't know what kind of infrastructure they're trying to build, but like some infrastructure and they're going to, business is just gonna naturally fall onto place. That's just false. And we told you that rather than that, we should concentrate port facilities, airports, power plants, whatever resources infrastructure there is in one city so that they're viably able to trade across the country so Manila can trade with other countries so that those money can be come into the country, people can work, make money, and then, and then on, on, on that front, People are opportunities are guaranteed. All of the like the problems that occur in cities that are like going to hinder efficiency, all of that, is like a natural progression of the problem that exists. And if that's the case, then they'll just naturally distribute themselves across the country. We don't need government policy to create weird infrastructure across the country to do that. So overall development, we have won. Then about distribution, because like this is also very weird because like for some reason, their assumption is that our government has infinite resources to distribute infinite kind of opportunities and infrastructure across the country, which is just, just fundamentally a fantasy land, right? Like, and unless they can specify what kind of development, what kind of infrastructure, what kind of opportunity is gonna be provided by each of the villages and each of the cities, and then we have no idea whether that's gonna happen and that we don't know whether that's going to help these people. We told you that will never happen as long as there's no money in the budget, especially in developing countries where like their lesser resources are extremely limited. Even in developed countries like Japan, who has infinite, like a lot of resources, still find it difficult to help these villages and so forth. So our model allows Tokyo or whatever central city to create the kind of resources that's necessary and distribute that across the world. We told you that Protests and political power, because they're concentrated within that the city, lobbying is easier for people to come to one city, 
protest, get the resources they need, and then distribute it across. Our, the distributive model is better on our side. If you have city, city, cities, no one's there, then no one cares, protest doesn't get aired, and nothing happens. So we believe that both in terms of like practically speaking, as well as the political will to distribute that resources, we believe we have won. At the end of the day, this debate comes to a simple conclusion of whether like limitation of resources and limitation of how that is used is considered. We did, they didn't, they lost. Thank you. I thank the speaker for the speech. Now I like to call upon the final speaker of the round. Government reply. Yeah, here. Yeah. Can I start? Thanks. My speech will start in three, one. After two pieces of framing, firstly, for the safe, sake of safeguard, I'm going to clarify infrastructure in both paradigm, and second, distribution, lastly, economy. So first framing here is that they severely lack impact. We told you why is it mandate for the state to prioritize egalitarian policy even at the expense of net new tile. There was literally no response apart from the pragmatic mitigation that they can do small portion of distribution. I will rebut that later, but fundamentally they severely lack value judgment. What is the state mandate? What is the priority of the state? That's why we won. Second, about resource. We told you pri private sector will increase resource exclusively under our world because in the mega city, business channels are dominated and monopolized by some limited corporations. It's bars and difficult for newcomers to enter and acquire new channels. Only response is that there are many job opportunities, ignoring the fact that channel is a prerequisite and having a business counterpart and having facility is a prerequisite of getting opportunities, obviously it's impossible if channels and facilities are barred by some gigantic corporations. Firstly, infrastructure. I have to say, I want delicious tap water from anywhere at Tokyo. I want stable electricity and internet even at midnight so that I can fully play Apex Legends. But state have to prioritize providing safe water at least five minutes away from their own home of the citizens in rural area, or like, not, maybe not so strong enough to play FPS, but at least bare minimum for using social media or job conferences in rural area from every household. We, all, we are already clear from the very beginning. I don't know why they are being so mean to us, because we are not presuming unlimited amount of budget or not presuming fantasy development. We are already considered from the fact, very beginning from prime minister, that scale and the small, case is small, maybe we have to limit to several cities, not just all cities, obviously it's true, but we are more egalitarian than opposition paradigm, and it's a mandate of the state have to do. Second, distribution. First, about private incentive, because they magically like, assumes many people like rural area, like Sakurai-san. So firstly, they didn't have any logics, but rather it's contradictory to the original claim that urban cities are quite convenient and quite useful and quite beneficial for citizens' lives. But well, second, we already told you from the very beginning that once people reside, like, live in specific area, people will have job, culture, friends, families at that place, and it's quite difficult for people to smoothly move to different places. This effectively mitigates the like, mitigation to our pra practical consequence. Second, about public incentive on politics. So there's no fiat for opposition to say we will distribute resources to rural areas, so they have to mechanize. What was the mechanism of opposition? Firstly, opposition we lastly said that it's impossible to make policy only benefit Tokyo. It's possible, like budget subsidy allocation, prioritizing elite allocation in urban area for the sake of the more development, et cetera, et cetera. They have to prove what is impossible impossibility. Second, they said like physical protest is effective to pro protest the pressure, judicial or diet, blah, blah, blah. They have to identify who are the protesters and what are the incentive of the protesters in concentrated mega city in opposition paradigm? We are very clear from the very beginning, only privileged individuals who have money and who have cultural racial proximity to the concentrated mega city can go to those areas 
then they will protest for the sake of their own values, their own genders or races or cultures, ethnicities, blah, blah, blah. Thus, what they have effectively proven throughout protest is our mechanism that megacity will not provide distribute, to, provide distribute resources to rural areas. That's why we won. Even if all of opposition is true, they still haven't engaged with the transferring capitals. We don't have to spend 20 or 100 years to Tokyo. We can just, like, smooth, after 10 or 20 years, we can shift resources to Osaka so that both can be decently, mega, 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 decently well cities. They have to prove why unlimitedly resources have to be poured into single city. That's about the opposition side. Economy, uh, I think we won. Yeah, thank you. All right, I thank all the speakers for the round.